Yes, welcome amazing people and I hope that as you took the time to go with me into that room to actually look at what we shared that day, I know that the energy with which I share in platforms where I walk into the different rooms and share knowledge with different people is quite different. The enthusiasm and the energy is quite up there. So I hope that you were able to pick one or two things about building a brand. We are in an era and we are in such a time that you cannot avoid it everyone is a brand these days okay uh, even when it takes time for you to uh, create or concretize that brand to monetize that brand and to be able to make impact and transformation with that brand Ignorance is not bliss, and that is why we come sharing this, okay? So now let's come back here and be able to share just a few things and uh, part of the things that I have done in my personal life on this journey of creating a brand, and not just a brand that is true, you'll say, ah, but Bahati, uh, you've been at this for a long time. Yes, indeed, I've been at this for more than 15 years, and uh, I have learned so many things because firsthand I've bumped into everything, literally everything when I started no one was there to hold my hand to show me that this is how you build a brand when I started no one told me I was even building a brand so I kept going I kept doing the things that I thought I needed to do you know when you arrive at a place and ask yourself what next and then what next? I didn't know there was anything called a corporate brand, anything called a, a product brand, anything called a service brand, anything called a personal brand. I didn't know that any of those things actually existed. All I knew is I come from an era that is actually in between the era of uh, lack of social media and then the introduction of social media. Some of you were born when social media was already here. But for some of us, I remember the first time I saw Facebook, it was um, not even a friend, a colleague, a work colleague that had just come in um, from the US. And then I was already a radio presenter. Just imagine a radio presenter who didn't know anything about Facebook, Instagram, or anything like that. I don't even think that Instagram was there yet. I think it was just Facebook. So uh, he opens and I, I see all his friends and he's like, this is Facebook. So I was like, okay, this is a book that has the faces of all, of all, all his friends. Just imagine. And I remember at some point we had an argument because I used to do research. I don't remember how I used to do research, but I used to do research and I used to, you know, give the people that were listening to me value. So just know some of us started building brands before social media existed. Existed. Now, when social media came in, it was more of an advantage because then it has opened the platform to everyone else out there. So for me, it uh, came from lack of clarity to finding clarity. And that is where I want us to walk this journey together uh, from finding from lack of clarity to finding clarity. I did IT as my first bachelor's and then I get, got into business and, uh, you know, uh, got lost into the world of business, went to Kayunga, opened up shops. I had one one phone in in the shop and airtime of 500, of, no, 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 5,000 or no, no, 50,000 and it was borrowed. So I had to, to give it back. And so from all that, I was staggering in a place and I know that so many of us are finding ourselves starag, staggering in places where you know that IT is not really my thing. I don't think I would have done it. And uh, But I don't know what to do. I have gone to school. My parents didn't even know what I had to do. I remember I registered for IT because a friend, a family friend had suggested this is an in thing and it's the newest thing. So I was among the first lot of uh, the people at Makere to do IT. I, I was among the very first lot when it was introduced. But I didn't know what I was going to do. All I knew is I was not interested in sitting down to do hardware and to do software so branched into business life uh, was lifing you know in a bad way and uh, uh, the time that I took doing business and then the time that I made a decision and say that you know what I need to get back and do something because if my siblings are to ever have a future I must be able to decide what I want for myself so 
I decided, again, not because of me, but because I knew that there were people that were looking up to me and I needed to make headway in order for them to actually make headway. So I come back. But on coming back, uh, I've told this story several times, and I remember Tim had uh, wanted me to do actually finance because he had companies and he thought if I did finance, things will be fine. So I end up going to the university, check to their notice board, and remember I come back to the university after I'm much older, I must have been more than like 20, 20 something, 20, 29 or 28, and um, I'm studying with 19 year olds. But when I looked at guidance and counseling, it resonated with me for as long, as in it really resonated with me because I felt I want to speak into people's lives. I want to to help people transform their own lives, make better decisions. But McHugh, I didn't know anyone else that was doing that. I didn't know. I, di I had never seen any other counselor. I had never seen any other coach. But one thing I know that there is a time, and still I've shared this story so many times, there is a time I, I was at school and I think I should have been in secondary somewhere, you know, when you have those covers, the book covers. So someone had a magazine as a book cover and this magazine had Kenneth Copeland and it had Joyce Meyer and it had uh, Creflo Dollar and it had, you know, all those, you know, the fathers in Christianity. But I remember there was something that Kenneth Copeland was offering and it was about coaching. And I read it while I was in secondary school and I had never heard about coaching. And I, it really resonated with me and I felt like, yeah, coaching would be a good thing, talking to people. But remember, I had not seen anyone actually do it. So now I make a decision. I want to go for, um, I, I want to go for counseling and guidance. I go through counseling and guidance, definitely it's theory most of the part. And then then I come to a place where one time one of my again fathers I've had so many fathers as I grow up not my real father but um, his name was Daniel Peters uh, uh, he came to me and asked me how can I help you in your growth journey and there I was at uh, campus you know struggling no food you know not, not, nothing surviving is hard and I remember I didn't ask money from him but I asked for radio airtime so do, do you see how decisions and choices place you on your path of creating a brand even when I didn't know that I was creating a brand? So that means choices and decisions are very crucial if you are ever going to actually create a brand. So I asked for airtime. I said, just give me radio airtime. And he was like, I'm not going to give you that much radio airtime. I'm going to give you two minutes clips uh, for three times a day. So make use of those. I was like, thank you. I got into studio and produced two minutes clips. And now that is the start of who Bahati is. Because then on Spirit FM, people got to know who Bahati is by having two minutes clips and sometimes one minute clip for three times in a day. And I made sure that people understand I am Bahati Hilda and people understand that this is my phone number. And in case they needed any kind of help, Remember, I had not even, I was not even done with campus. But activity or activating or doing something, okay? Some of you are at places where you are at a crossroad. You don't know. Now, inactivity does not breed success or growth. It's activity. And even if it's activity, but in the wrong direction, you realize you'll discover that, okay, I'm in the wrong direction. It's better I come back to the right direction. But after you have started and after you have activated, after you have done something. So now I go to Spirit FM. And I'm doing those clips, and I am I am so intentional. If I showed you, I call it as as a, 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 a not a, a, a notebook, but a scratchbook. I used to write all sorts of things. I would write statements and make sure that they, you know, they they they, they complement each other and they supplement each other, and then they make sense and stuff like that. And I started getting calls of people wanting to actually come and do um, and, and do counseling and do, you know, and, and be helped. And I remember from that, I graduated to one hour on radio. And one hour was around 11. 
a girl who does not have transport, a girl who does, cannot even afford food, but I've been given one hour. I stay in Chireka. I have come to come to Namirembe, and I have to find my way as a young girl coming to Namirembe, make sure that I leave Namirembe at 11 p.m. Now, sometimes building a brand takes muscle, takes toughness, takes the preparedness of your mind to know that it's not going to be easy, but you're going to put in the time anyway, because I could have given up. I could have said, you know what? It's, it's impossible. I can't do it. But even when I got just money enough for me to feed, I will keep that money for transport. And I would go on an empty stomach, go to radio and make sure that I do my hour. And then now I had to find out why exactly was I doing this? Because clarity is very important while you're building your brand. Why was I doing this? Now, it came to me that every time I stood to speak or I researched or I did a, my radio segment of uh, like 50 minutes, I was talking about relationships. I was talking about marriage. Remember, I was not married. I was not in relationships. But for me, it had a very firm foundation being that I was coming from a broken family and I was coming and that's not what I wanted. And for so long, I had prayed to God to give me the authority and to give me the wisdom to find better ways of how, if I got married, I will be able to actually sustain an, an my marriage. So while I was on a personal quest to grow and to find ways that marriage could be saved, revived, revamped, and, you know, sustained, I went on that journey and I took people on the journey with me. Now, little did I know that that was also a stamp in the right direction and I was actually creating a brand of uh, personal you know, relationships. And so even when I, choose, I chose to go for my master's and later PhD, I decided that positive applied psychology and human relationships were actually my thing. And because I felt I should talk to people that are suffering in marriages, I should talk to people that are suffering in relationships, I should talk to people who are being either battered, who are in antagonistic, high conflict, narcissistic, toxic relationships. And every time I opened my microphone, that's what I was writing about. Every time I wrote my posts, that is what I, I wrote about. Now, for those of you that are in my mentorship class, that are being mentored for uh, speaking, writing, and coaching, you know that the first assignment I actually give you is to open up platforms and then you start speaking your mind. If your Facebook asks you what's on your mind, Indeed, give them what's on your mind. Not what you think is right for people to, 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 to read, but what you think you want is bubbling inside of you and you want to bring it out. So I used to write about relationships. I used to write about recovering from heartbreaks. I used to write about walking away from bad relationships. And I remember so many people used to write to me and tell me, are you going through something? And in my heart, I'll be like, because I felt I was authentic in doing whatever I was doing. Remember, at that point, I didn't even have the authority to do that um, uh, when it comes to marriage. But I remember so many people's eyes opened. And that opened a chapter of me writing deliberately selfish. And that was another bestseller ac across East Africa. And it, had, it, had, it, it even took the position of number one bestseller for three years consecutively. And I wrote coming from my heart. If you got that book, literally, you'd feel Bahati speaking because that was my pain. Looking at any kind of, ma at first it was women, and then after that it grew into the men, that people were actually suffering in relationships. And I do not believe that God created the happiness of marriage or happiness of relationships only for people to get in and suffer. I believe in people that respect in each other, are loyal to each other, are friends, people that accept each other, you know? People that um, are, are, are very um, accepting and loyal to each and committed to each other. So I believed, and that is how I created the five pillars of relationships and marriages, because I believed in these five pillars. And I told God that if I ever got married, these will be the five pillars that cement my marriage and cement my, my, my foundation for a relationship and a proper marriage. And let me tell you, I did not lie to God when I was making that prayer. I have lived by them.